So ladies and gentlemen, before we go on with the main point of the video here, I need to address something so that way anyone that is watching this video or videos like these can 100% understand where I'm coming from as I like to be transparent with everyone and what my intentions are when it comes to these videos here. And that right there is for one purpose to help spread the message for players that don't have a voice. And while the majority of you guys who watch my videos understand that 100% and you guys support what I'm doing, which by the way, much love to all of you guys for that. Like you guys have no freaking idea how much I appreciate you guys hearing me out and spreading what I am talking about here because these are things that simply put cannot be ignored. But there are a few people out there that will try try to spin it negatively and try to either defend Niantic or accuse me of clout chasing or spreading misinformation. Here's my only response to all of that. If you can't understand the context here that is being laid out, if you can't do five seconds of research, then simply put, miss me with that shit. I'm here to spread the message and to continue to be the voice of the voiceless, and that's what I'm going to do. And while that statement right there, as well as these videos, might come off to a select few as toxic and negative, let me clue you guys in on a little something. Do you want to know what is really truthfully toxic? Fake positivity, fake pandering, minimizing legitimate issues and concerns, and carrying on as if nothing is wrong and that nothing is happening. So make the decision, who would you rather listen to? Someone that might come off as a little bit harsh, but will be honest with you and straightforward and have your back, or someone that won't give it to you straight, that won't be transparent with you, and will continue to fake pander, spread fake positivity, and grandstand as if there's absolutely nothing wrong with the current situation because I certainly know who I'd be listening to and that would be the former and not the latter but with that long intro slash clarification out of the way let's go ahead and let's proceed with the main topic of the video Pokemon Go players furious after compiling all gameplay changes from a past year this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be interesting. One Pokemon Go fan compiled a list of every major gameplay change developer Niantic made to the game in the past year, leaving fans fuming. The Pokemon Go player base is going through tumultuous times lately, ain't that an understatement, which follow Niantic's decision to increase the price of remote raid passes and limit their uses. And to once again remind you guys as to what these changes are, the raid pass bundle being the pack of three went from 300 poke coins to 525 and for a single remote raid pass it went from 100 coins to 195 so nearly doubling in price of poke coins and the limited usage is five uses a day and we're not talking about successful uses we're talking about in general uses so if you fail a raid then that right there is going to be a mark against you. Since then, players have not shielded away from expressing their misgivings about some of the recent changes and hiccups the developer has made in the weeks since. Now, one Pokemon trainer has compiled a list of all the major gameplay changes Niantic made to Pokemon Go over the past year to put things into perspective for the community. And I'm willing to bet that the list is going to be fairly sizable in quality and even quantity too. A post on the Pokemon Go subreddit gained the attention of fellow trainers after one user made a post with the caption, these are the changes from the past year. If they launched them all at once like this, would it be just a loud minority that would be complaining? And this right here is the image slash post in question. Updates to the gameplay. Trainers, we have planned a set of changes to the gameplay that we will be activating tomorrow. Incense no longer works while stationary. Community days will last for three hours instead of six. Remote raid passes will cost $1.95 each, bundles $5.25, and you'll be limited to five remote raids per day. Weekly one coin box will be removed. Elite raids will be introduced in person only. Exclusive raid bosses that can be fought on one day only requires multiple people to beat. 
Legendary encounter rates from Go Battle League will be greatly reduced. The value of the boxes in the shop will be drastically cut. You can buy a Keldeo for $7.99 from this shop. And that, ladies and gentlemen, can be summed up to one single word. Cringe. This was absolutely god-awful. Like, all of those changes within a one-year period, my god. Like, this is something that even Pokemon Go purists cannot defend 100%. The OP created an image to accompany the post made to look like a regular update email from Niantic, but with the idea that each of these spread out decisions was implemented in one singular update. That was kind of like a bit of a joke theme in that post, but it listed all of the changes, which is a big time yikes. Among the changes were things like community days will last for three hours instead of six, and we Weekly one coin box will be removed. Now, I still, even to this very day, don't understand those that defend the community day nerf, where instead of it being six hours, it's three. How is that defensible? I mean, here's the thing, is that nobody is forcing you to play the entire six hours, but six hours instead of three hours of availability allows for a greater window of flexibility for those that have active lifestyles outside of Pokemon Go. So if you're standing by that nerf, then in a way you're kind of being elitist and you are thinking that, oh, well, three hours is plenty and if you miss out on this event, well then too bad for you, tough titty said the kitty. Whereas six hours offers, like I said, a greater window and a greater amount of flexibility because say if you are only able to participate in one, maybe two hours out of the six hours for community day before you either have to babysit, before you have to go to work, before you have to do family stuff, etc., etc., at least it allows for those players to get a taste of that community day event and walk away not completely feeling left out. But it absolutely blew my mind that there were people that defended this and even certain Pokemon Go influencers defended this as well, which even to this very day, it's like, I don't understand what type of logic you're trying to use here to defend this because it just doesn't work at the end. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep on going here. Funnily enough, the post actually brought some unnoticed changes to players' attention. Like one trainer said, I didn't know incense didn't work while stationary anymore, but that makes a lot of sense now. That sucks. And actually, on that note of unnoticed changes, something that I actually didn't notice would be the thing about PvP legendaries, as well as the Keldeo purchase for $7.99. Like, those are things that I didn't even know about. Like, god damn, like, it just keeps on getting more and more interesting, eh, folks? With a clear view of these gameplay adjustments laid out before them, many voiced their frustrations in the reply section. This visual actually displays the level of cleverness this company has. They slowly and stealthily add more and more detriments to the game over time. This recent update just happened to be a wake-up call for us players. And that's exactly it, you know what I'm saying? Like, at first, over time, it didn't seem like it was really that big a deal or not a big enough deal, but you see, with the nerf of remote raids, that right there was too big of a deal to simply not be ignored, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back, and rightfully so. The OP admitted that this thought process was the motive behind creating the image in the first place, and honestly, it wouldn't really be too surprising if this right here was intentional. If this right here was intentional on Niantic's end, they may be stupid, but they're not stupid at the same time. At least they know how to piss off their players and self-sabotage their game. Nerfs and negative changes are sprinkled around in a way that that when they hit, it will always be just a loud minority bitching that can easily be belittled or dismissed. Just something to think about for the next time they hit us with another not that bad change. And you know something, that actually kind of brings up a really interesting point. Because for those that either still blatantly defend Niantic or try to minimize the impact of the concerns and issues that players have when it comes to these changes, 
if it was just one singular change, then it would be like, okay, then it's really not that big a deal. But because of the manner and the pace that these changes were rolled out slowly and stealthily over the last year, when it begins to add up, it's like the whole not that bad thing really doesn't work out. Now, another thing I want to touch base with you guys on real quick would be the petition revolving around remote rating for Pokemon Go. As it stands right now, we have ourselves over 107,000 signatures, with there still being a good amount of active signatures as time ticks on. Now, the reason I bring this up is because there were some comments made saying that, oh, this right here is a drop in the bucket compared to the millions upon millions of active users in Pokemon Go. Well, let me give you guys a little bit of food for thought if we want to go with that mindset here. Just because you have 75 plus million active users of Pokemon Go doesn't mean they're actual people. Sure, it takes an actual person to play the game, but who's to say that that one single user doesn't have multiple accounts, which contributes to the overall figure of the millions upon millions of active users users. It's really 75 plus million active accounts. So that's really about it here for this video. I wanted to not only address the main topic in the article, but also kind of address a couple of other little things as well involving negative criticisms for Hear Us Niantic. Now, understandably, not everyone is going to have the same mindset. Not everyone is going to agree, and that's absolutely fine. If you are going to actively disagree, then number one, remember to maintain civility and maintain the gentleman's rule in discussion and debate. And number two, if you are making a counterclaim, then the burden of proof is on you. Please back it up. Cite some sources. And number three, even if you still disagree, at least acknowledge what the other person is saying and try to understand where they're coming from, okay? Treat this like it is a learning experience. Even if you don't agree with what the other person is saying, try to understand things from their perspective. I mean, who knows? They may have a point of view that may bring something up that is valuable for you to learn. So that's it here for the video, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Either way, I always love to hear you guys back. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your time as well in viewing this video. Have yourself a damn good one, you beautiful people. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you next time.